Hi, so catalysts aren't something you think of, and it's not something you think of an everyday thing, unless, of course, your catalytic converter in your car has been stolen, because the uptick on theft of catalytic converters in cars is going through the roof, and there's a good reason for that. But catalysts are around us all of the time. They are a material that allows a reaction to occur at wildly different conditions, like very low temperatures, or allows it to happen very much more quickly. And your enzymes in your body are catalysts. They appear in washing powder, for example, and they are core to industry. Most chemicals are produced that way, and if we want to move to a green economy, then things like hydrogen production and ammonia production and green fuels and bioplastics rely heavily on catalysts. Now, the issue at the moment is that most of the catalysts are actually really quite rare materials, things like rhodium and palladium and platinum. And these materials are stupidly, stupidly expensive. Rhodium, for instance, is over half a million dollars per kilo. Palladium is $30,000 per kilo, and platinum, of course, is more expensive than gold, which is why you're getting your converters stolen, because even though it doesn't have much in there, it's got enough in there to make it worth the trouble. Now, the challenge, of course, is and has always been to get catalysts with the same functionality as precious metals, but at nothing in terms of the cost. Now, you may not have thought about it this way before, but chemical reactions are all about the interaction of electrons. They're about the sharing of electrons or the movement of electrons, and that's what chemical reactions are. Physics deals with the nucleus, chemistry deals with the electrons, and it's the electron interaction that makes a difference. Now, the surface of these expensive metals has a particular electron distribution that's able to influence the electron distribution on the chemicals you want to react. And that's basically how they work. So these expensive metals have a peculiar surface, and if we could reproduce that peculiar surface, there exists the potential of being able to replace expensive metals with incredibly cheap metals. And we're talking about things like Aluminium and copper, where you're talking in the region of sort of $200 per kilogram, something like that. And it turns out that can be done. And it's a research term at the uni a research team at the University of Minnesota who found a path forward using one of my favourite things, a capacitor. A capacitor is electronically an extremely simple device. Its behaviour is complex, but the device itself is extremely simple. It's just two metal plates with a dielectric in between them, and you can make one by putting some kitchen foil either side of a bit of a plastic bag. And basically bung a load of electrons on one side, and by a property called induction, the electrons on the other side are forced off, so you end up with a negative plate and a positive plate. What Minnesota realised is that what they're doing is changing the electron structure of one of the plates by applying a voltage to the capacitor. And they decided to call their device a catalytic condenser because it was based on a capacitor. And what they did was use thin films to construct a device that was a layer of silicon, a layer of hafnium oxide, and hafnium oxide is the dielectric, then a layer of graphene, and then a layer of alumina. And when they put a voltage across that, they were able to change the surface characteristics of the alumina. And when I say surface characteristics, I don't mean things like roughness, I mean things like the electron distribution and the electron shape on the actual film surface, so that they could effectively transform cheap metals like aluminium and copper so that they would act like things like rhodium and palladium. This is groundbreaking stuff because it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. For example, the hydrogen economy. Now, the production of hydrogen is predominantly by three ways. So, with this new catalytic condenser, what they're able to do, or should be able to do, is bring down that energy demand for electrolytic splitting of water to very, very low. And, of course, if they can do that, then the hydrogen economy that everybody's talking about comes into sight. Because, currently, it's just a, a curtain over a a room at the moment. They're pretending it's hydrogen, but it's mostly, I think it's 90% derived from petroleum. If we could split it from water, we would have a true hydrogen economy. We just don't. We get it from methane at the moment. 
And the problem with getting it from water is the energy cost. It costs far more energy to get it out of water than you get back by burning the water. But with a catalyst, the energy cost is set to dramatically reduce, as is the catalyst price. And so we will have hydrogen that we can burn at net positive. There are in fact several projects running alongside the development of the catalytic converter, for instance storing renewable energy as ammonia. At the moment there are a couple of plants in Australia that use solar to form the ammonia because splitting hydrogen from ammonia is less energy costly than splitting it from water, but they're running a project on storing renewable energy in the form of ammonia. They're also looking at projects where key components of bioplastics can be cheaply and effectively formed. There's another project looking, up at cl looking at cleaning up gas waste streams. Here's a title page for the research article. It only came out on May the 7th, 2022, so about four days ago. It's an open access article, so if you want to have a read of it, then just Take that information from the screen, jump over there and you can read the article and see what these guys are up to. So it's a brand new development of how to turn ordinary metals in terms of activity into precious metals for catalytic purposes. That for me is an extremely exciting thing because of the possibilities that it has. Anyway. I came across this article, I thought it was extremely exciting, so I thought I would share it with you. I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.